right now who still think a vasectomy means having my knob cut off, you know? I mean, I, I'm actually, I've not gone for the action man look. It's not just smooth, you know? I, it's not, the, the knob has got, the knob is still there, right? It still functions. It does everything the knob did previously. I mean, there's coffee on tap, but it's just decaf. That's the key there. Right? <laughs> Uh, what they do is they take a crocodile nose plier type thing, they heat it up and they clamp down on your shoes and they heat it up like that. Have you ever seen a one-year-old try to use a drinking straw? It's pretty much like that. They sort of clamp it shut and then when they take it out, it stays shut. And I was like, well, I know a lot of people in here, like me, probably thinking, well, what happens to all the sperm that are being made that can't go anywhere? Because I had this genuine thought that it would just keep building up and up and up and up. You know, every two months and I'd go back to the doctor to be tapped off or something like that, you know? <laughs> I can put a spike in it. Can you help me out, please? I'm finding a trigger to cross my legs, you know. It's decamped me, right? And, um, but no, he said, no, what happens is with the sperm, if you're curious, once you've had a vasectomy, is once it can't go through the tube, it basically just, basically dissolves into your bloodstream. And so my sperm is being generated and then just going into me. So it's quite weird, after 20 years of comedy and people in the audience shouting out, go fuck yourself, I now am. So I am mean, <laughs> I'm fucking myself right now. That's the thing. I'm just, oh, just coming myself. Incredible. And, uh, and and that's the thing. You're not allowed to drive yourself because after the operation you'll be a little bit faint and a little bit tender. So you've got to take a friend with you. So a friend of mine picked me up as well and just he found it hilarious. He was taking me to get my perspective. Oh, funny, funny, funny. And um, he took me in his sports car as well as well because he thought it'd be hilarious on the way back to drive over all the fucking cat's eyes. He is a legend. And um, and they tell you as well actually because there'll be quite a bit of swelling afterwards. He said the thing to do is to put frozen peas on it. So I said, well, look, I'm gonna. Uh, go off and have my op. Can you go and get me some frozen peas from the supermarket? He came back with Taste the Difference, which I think is amazing. You know? <laughs> you fucking eat them. No. The irony being as well, if you talk your girlfriend into it afterwards, she will genuinely taste the difference. So I, um, but, so, uh, so anyway, so they're doing the op, and it's not under general, that's the funny thing, is what I didn't really want, and it's not the fact that I want to be asleep for the operation, you know, I prefer to be able to look down and study. The problem is, is the nervousness of knowing that there's somebody down there doing an operation while I'm fully conscious, because I'm lying back, and I'm a nervous person, I'm naturally nervous, and when I'm nervous I speak. Most of my comedy comes from the fact that I'm a nervous person, and this is what I do, I will start cracking jokes when I feel a little bit awkward, and that's the one time you don't want to crack jokes, is when there's a stranger holding a scalpel to your ball back, right? That is a, that is a time to keep the funnies to one side, you know? It's like, oh, unexpected item in bagging area. I mean, that's not what you're going to do. <laughs> so, the sperm is actually stuck in the tubes after it, okay? So, so after you actually have sex, after the vasectomy, you could still get someone pregnant. So what you have to do, you're supposed to flush out. They told me what you need to have is about 20 expulsions before it's going to be okay. And I'm thinking, I'm a man with two children under school age. I am not going to have the time to knock out 20 expulsions. You may as well have told me this before the operation, because I'll be fucking 60 before I can do that. I mean, I mean, when I was in my teens, Tuesday, that was 20 expulsions, right? So, so they give you a little pot, and they say, once you've done your 20, fill that up, post it off, we'll tell you if you're safe and you're sterile to have sex again without the chance of making it children. And of course, there's no chance of me doing it. You know, I'm about two weeks in, I think I've managed twice. You know, and both of those were cut short by some child banging on a fucking bathroom door, right? I mean, I want to get my sponge, really. I want to finish myself off fucking way, okay? Right? <laughs> So, I mean, anyway, so it didn't happen. And now, anyway, after four weeks, they've got a letter saying, we still haven't received your sample. It's very important we get this. Well, we cannot say, say that you're sterile. It's important that you prioritise this. I'm, I'm going to have to put, I'm looking at my diary thinking, I can't wait then, I can't wait then. I'm just, I'm, March is looking particularly busy. I can barely touch myself, you know. I'm a busy man as well. So I thought, fine, I'm going to have to do it, right? But I didn't get anywhere close to it, right? And two weeks later, I got a red letter genuinely angry letter from the clinic saying the operation will not have been for any point if we cannot certify the fact that you are sterile. This is our last letter. I was expecting the bailiffs to turn up, you know, like, to run the door right, Harry, Bob, you know why we're here, wank him off, fuck it, here we go. <laughs>